I'm sure you know who these guys are. Only the creators of one of the most successful web shows of all time. With a view count in the billions, it's hard to come across someone who hasn't seen at least one of their many videos. But what you may not know is where it all began, and what they've done to maintain that unparalleled momentum for nine years and counting. This is the story of ERB. YouTube has always had a special place in my heart. Time to kick it! Doing your mom! Do it, doing your mom! Doing your mom! Do it, doing your mom! Growing up, it was attractive to me because it offered a much needed alternative to the mainstream. You couldn't find people like Smosh or Forest Fire 101 on TV, who were both favorites of mine as a kid. Bad Hound, stop humping! Stop it right now! Ugh. Having the option to watch something more unconventional was enough to convert YouTube from a venture capital funded startup into a multi-billion dollar organization. But of course, with the unprecedented rise of such a company comes an inevitable wave of changes. The increasingly strict guidelines of YouTube have posed quite a strain on creativity in recent years, pushing some of its most valuable and original creators off the site completely. But not all of them. Oh, Epic Rap Battles of History was my sh** growing up. The channel may have only been a few years old at the time, but that didn't stop me from knowing an uncomfortable amount of the lyrics by heart. The concept of pitting two historical figures against one another, whether they be real or fictional, was just too good for my 14 year old self to overlook. I need to bring up some basic shit. Why'd you name your company after your dead? Well, jobs, you ever get tricked with your second hand jeans and you turn on like I'll turn a hole in the middle of your bony head with your own little spit of big ball like that. I'd be willing to bet that at least half of their 3.2 billion views is because of me, honestly. But what is it that makes ERB so damn appealing to so many people? Not only have they been able to captivate a fraction of our planet's population, but they're still reaching a considerably wide and loyal fan base to this very day. Hell, they've even inspired an entire subgenre of ERB parodies, which I also can't get enough of. Peter Griffin versus Homer Simpson! This Griffin's about to tear apart the slabby marshmallow. You're such a coward, even your artist draws you yellow. I'm clearly about a family guy, this isn't even fair. My popularity is bigger than your wife's blue hair. Yeah, right into my veins, there you go. But to get a better idea of the ERB genesis, we should probably start with the men behind the channel. Nice Peter and Epic Lloyd. Uh, so... Oh god, I look weird. Peter Shukov is a musician who set his sights on comedy shortly after moving to Chicago to pursue his dreams of becoming an entertainer. He began posting to the channel Nice Peter in mid-2009, uploading miscellaneous vlogs and music videos every few weeks. They were, uh, quite something. I'm a freaky ass Russian dude. All I want for Christmas is to no longer be gay. All I want for Christmas is to have sex with a real man Like an angry Japanese baby with a missile dick, yeah! But the idea to create a series based on celebrities rap battling each other never occurred to Peter until he met Lloyd Aliquist at a house party in Chicago. Lloyd, being an MC and improviser himself, eventually moved out to LA to start a comedy club called West Side Comedy Theater, along with Zach Sherwin, who would also go on to play several roles in the series. One of their segments, Celebrity Rap Battles, consisted of famous people roasting each other in the form of a freestyle battle rap. Lloyd always described himself as a closeted rapper. He would write and record songs without an outlet to properly express himself. But the segment quickly became a favorite among regular theater goers, which prompted Lloyd to invite his friend Peter out to the show, who recognized the potential such a unique concept could bring to an already growing YouTube channel. And just like that, Epic Rap Battles of History was born. They released their first unofficial battle, Chucky vs. Michael J. Fox, in March of 2010, on an album completely separate from the series. This is said to be the only demo recorded before the series officially began. Michael J. Fox in the house, y'all. Yo, Chucky here. Huh. Let me take this one, bitch. Huh. Yo. Check it out. Watch me crank my amplifier up real high while I'm 
looking for the dock You be a little tiny midget using a sock as a sleeping bag You little weird crusted up fucking sore face You had like 18 movies man, look at your fucking face You're weird, you're dead, you're a little toy I've been, uh, I've been making movies since I was a little boy I've been back to the future and I've been back to the future again And then I was a back to the future the third time Where have you been? Yo, mention my face man, I'm getting dirty cause you make me Don't make me talk about how you're old and shaky Man, I know that is how you are, I please Gotta diss you for your Parkinson's disease I think that's what you have, baby Now you look old, or long neck like a giraffe <laughs> Let me start to cut and suit ya I'm gonna kill you, yeah. bring you back to the future Of course you gotta talk about disabilities, man I know Chucky, that's important But you're fucking Freddy Krueger's abortion, man <laughs> The decision to film and upload battles on YouTube was a game changer. The first three videos were all shot on a $50 budget. And although the first episode didn't blow up immediately, the second one did. Back then, YouTube worked a lot differently. If you made a video that your audience liked a lot, it would be pushed to the favorited tab on the front page. The website had the power to grant internet fame overnight. You could have just a couple thousand subs and still make it to the front page of YouTube simply by getting enough likes. Which is exactly what happened to their second battle, Darth Vader versus Adolf Hitler. You can't rhyme against the dark side of the force, why even bother? So many dudes been with your mom, who even knows if I'm your father? You're a pissed off little prick with a Napoleon dick. You call that a mustache? I call that dirty Sanchez on your lip. The video actually ended up being blocked in all the countries Hitler invaded, which ironically enough added to its view count. The goal, as stated by Peter, was to crack at least one million views on that one. As I'm sad here writing this almost 10 years later, it now boasts over 100 million views. So really, anything's possible with enough determination and Nazi jokes. You stink, Vader! Your star smells something sour! You need to wash up, dog! Here, step in my shower! The ever-growing success of the battles created a new challenge for the pair. A challenge that affects just about every comedian in the industry, which is the question of how far is too far? With comedy, the biggest obstacle is often determining how close you can get to that line of appropriateness before the audience deems you too crass or even unlikable. As described in an interview, Peter had grown so accustomed to the grimy atmosphere of Chicago bars that the whole anything goes approach was transmitted from his comedy acts to his YouTube channel. It wasn't until he began listening to the feedback from his audience that he upped his comedic and musical standards, indicating just how important viewer assessment has always been in his eyes. Noting they were engaged, listening, and ready to react more subtly. The feedback provided by ERB viewers was imperative to the progression of the series, as it greatly influenced the overall quality by raising the stakes with each episode. Four score and 65 years in the past, I won the Civil War with my beard, now I'm here to whoop your ass, I ran up on your back, you cure cancer with your tears, well tell me, talk about coming sat down and cried on your career. Peter and Lloyd strived to make every battle more impressive than the last. Sure, some were hit and miss. How you gonna battle? I invented him hopping, my little tail swinging and my big ears flopping. But that's because they were still finding their footing. After all, it was season one, so it's not like they really knew what they wanted to do at that point. The massive praise they began to receive converted the battles from your typical run-of-the-mill YouTube video into regular spectacles. They weren't videos, they were events. Their popularity spread so rapidly that the series quickly outgrew Nice Peter's personal channel. And in the season one finale, it was announced that they'd be moving all future battles to their own channel, simply titled ERB, along with a second channel to showcase behind the scenes footage. With a brand new channel and season underway, they needed a network, which is where Maker Studios stepped in. Not only are you not gonna quit the rap battles, Pete, you're gonna make them bigger, you're gonna make them better. Maker Studios, now called Disney Digital Network, because I, I guess Disney owns f***ing everything now, was originally co-founded by a handful of YouTubers, including Lisa Donovan, Philip DeFranco, Kasim G, and our good friend Shay Carl. The organization partnered with thousands of YouTubers, including Ray William Doing Ya Mom, Timothy Delegato, Tessa Violet, and of course, ERB, who was pulling in almost as many viewers as Nickelodeon back then. Thanks to Maker Studios, Peter and Lloyd had the resources necessary to produce new, quality episodes on a regular basis, with each episode racking up an average of about 40 to 60 million views. Finally, they had a budget of more than 50 bucks. Before us, people only used to fly in balloons. You think we're scared of two idiots addicted to shrooms? You shoulda, woulda, coulda, come to lose an extra life. So just da 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 da, -da. back down in your pipe. It's-a me, Mario! And Luigi, mother- Why don't you just get back in your pipe, 
to make out each other. Over an eight year span, ERB grew more than 14 million subscribers, scored 11 streamy wins, and two Emmy nominations for outstanding short form variety series. The channel showcased guest stars ranging from Rhett and Link to Key and Peel, Snoop Dogg to Weird Al Yankovic, not to mention the countless other YouTubers and artists who managed to land a spot over the course of the show's runtime. As I'm recording this, there have been a total of 75 episodes, which may not be a lot in terms of YouTube, but considering the amount of time and care that goes into each battle, it sure as hell takes a lot of work. But as ERB was expanding, there were some shakeups over at Maker Studios. After becoming a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company in 2014, the organization underwent a myriad of layoffs and executive replacements that resulted in broken contracts with YouTubers. It wasn't until early 2017 when Disney fully absorbed the studio, officially forming the Disney Digital Network. From there, the company had plans to reduce its 60,000 partnerships down to about 1,000, which frustrated many of its own YouTubers, causing the majority of them to part ways with the company. Around this time, Peter was about to become a dad, and Lloyd wanted to focus more on his own creative endeavors, so that meant a little bit of time off. I'm fucking burnt out, man, and it's been six years every day that I wake up and come to work to look at your hungover face. I need some personal space to get away from your screaming, but every time I turn my back, motherfucker, you start scheming to take over control of some shit I'm already doing just fine. We'd add more stuff to the beauty pie, you fight me every time I try to take our little baby in a creative direction. I'm trying to make art, motherfucker, you're trying to find a rock for a rock. Going off the final episode of season 5, it appeared the entire crew had grown tired of working on the same content every day for 6 years. YouTube burnout is a real thing, and it's important to avoid it at all costs by taking breaks as needed, which is something ERB hadn't really done up until that point. It was clear to me and most of their fans that an extended hiatus was more than overdue. But after about 2 years, things worked out. ERB announced a brand new season with a bonus battle, Elon Musk vs. Mark Zuckerberg in late 2018. With the channel now fully independent of Disney, they have less resources but more freedom in the type of content they wish to produce. Season 6 officially began on April 20th, 2019, with new battles uploaded every month thanks to the support they receive through Patreon. Data was a lieutenant commander to start, but I wouldn't expect you to understand an org chart. See, here's mine. I'm at the top. Top boss. And I'm spitting fire like I'm high. YouTube may be changing all the time, but epic rap battles of history has shown they're here to stay no matter what. As far as most channels go, their story is pretty atypical, but to me, that just further proves the resilient talent everyone behind ERB seems to possess. In the words of Lloyd Alquist, there's all sorts of advice on how to be successful on YouTube, but none of that matters if you're trying to manufacture passion. Make sure your main product is something you enjoy anyway, and that you enjoy doing for a long time. Which is, I think, some of the best advice you could ever give. Because if there's one word I'd use when describing Peter, Lloyd, and all of the Epic Rap Battles crew, it's passionate.